spring has sprung, so let's talk spring book recommendations. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and my favorite season is spring. I love that feeling of coming out of winter and just feeling alive again. I love the flowers. I love the renewed sense of like a connection to nature and so I wanted to make a spring recommendations video that focuses on these books that give that sort of feeling. So I'm gonna be listing off some fantasies that just seem spring to me. Some of these are very obviously spring and some of these aren't necessarily set in the spring but have spring vibes because they talk about a connection to nature um, and kind of have like this like wild magic or like a magic that connects to plants because to me that is spring. Before I go into that though, I do just want to shout out two romance books because I just read them and they just give me spring vibes so I just wanted to throw them in this video instead of making a whole separate video for them because they are very spring to me. The first one being Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. I just read this in February and I was obsessed with it. I think it technically takes place in the summer but it gives me spring vibes because we follow Hallie who is a gardener and Julian who is a college professor on sabbatical and they live in Napa Valley. Julian's family owns this famous winery but they're kind of struggling and so he's on sabbatical to write the novel of his life while he is not teaching and Hallie is the local gardener and she is hired to do some work outside of the cottage that Julian is living in and she is basically chaos and he is very staunchly orderly and they collide. He cannot stop thinking about the wild gardener that is planting outside of his house and interrupting his work whereas she knew Julian in high school, he was older and she had this gigantic crush on him and they in fact almost kissed um, and he doesn't remember her because she was younger so this is kind of like a second chance and very very grumpy sunshine and I loved it. You guys know I love Tessa Bailey, she does during Tuck really well. Hallie is also in midsize and I just liked how Julian was obsessed with her um, and it was a guy like waxing on poetic about a woman that wasn't like a size zero so like I appreciated that and it was just everything spring because there is so much talk of gardens and flowers because Hallie's life is this gardening and flowers and I loved it. The next book that I would like to talk about is Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. This is a closed door romance so just know that it doesn't have any spice so I think if you set your expectations right you will like this book because I think for me I need to know going in if it's gonna have spice or if it's not gonna have spice otherwise I'll be disappointed but anyways. So this is the second in a series set in Rome, Kentucky um, which is a very small town. The first book follows a pop star and a baker and this is the sister of the baker and the bodyguard of the pop star. So basically the bodyguard bodyguard Will is in town to guard Amelia, um, the pop star, and sparks lie between them because he is like a complete commitment phobe. He's like just there for like a fun time and Annie is the sweet florist in the town who's looking for a future husband potentially and basically she has no game. So Amelia's like, hey my bodyguard has a lot of game, why don't we have him teach you the basics of dating and things go from there. So she, he's her dating coach. And I think that this series is all kind of like loosely based on different Audrey Hepburn movies and this one is based off of, oh god, Funny Faces? Was that it? I have never seen an Audrey Hepburn film so I don't know but I just don't always are based off of the different films that she's been in. So I really enjoyed it. It was so sweet and cute and like really a lot of emotional depth to both their characters and the different things they have to walk through. I also really appreciated how they talk through all of their emotions like adults and there was like no really miscommunication. It was just like, I don't know, it, it, it was a very mature romance in the fact of that I felt like they handled the, their emotions very well. It was just kind of extenuating circumstances that caused the conflict and it it was so good and such spring vibes of course because she's a florist and so there's lots of like flower references and flower shop things and I mean just look at this cover. It literally screams spring. And I don't think this book is actually out until May 2nd, so you can grab it just before the end of spring. Okay, so I also have two historic recommendations I want to throw in here and the other one is going to be Bridgerton, just the whole Bridgerton series. I've only been reading the books like as the season comes out, so I've only read so I've only read the first two books, but Bridgerton just gives me perfect 
spring vibes maybe because like in watching the show like it's just all like spring london regency season strolling oh, what is it called promenading whatever and like all of the flower in the set work it just really like puts my mind in spring you know um so i'm just gonna like blanket recommend bridgerton and also the show um and if you don't know what bridgerton is about it's basically a historical romance series following the bridgerton family and it's set in regency england so you know balls and debuting and all sorts of shenanigans that come along with like the royal society of england at the time the other recommendation is the wisteria society of lady scoundrels by india holton and this is actually a historical fantasy romance so it kind of is blending all the genres that i'm talking about today and there's a few in the series but i'm just going to focus on the first one and i'm just going to read the little the little description it says a prim and proper lady thief must save her aunt from a crazed pirate and his dangerously charming henchman in this fantastical history romance sold and i mean everything about this cover is springtime so we have cecilia who is the ideal victorian lady but she's also a thief and she's part of a crime sorority which is otherwise known as the wisteria society so she flies around england drinking tea blackmailing people and getting treasure and then enter ned lightborn who is smitten with cecilia from the moment he lays his eyes on her however he has been hired to kill her but never underestimate a woman this just sounds like so much fun and like the tea the regency england something about that period just really makes me feel springy for whatever reason but yes now we get into the meat and bones of this recommendation video which is the cottage core spring vibes fantasies the first one is a smut fantasy romance and that is that time i got drunk and saved a demon by kimberly lemming i mean cozy fantasy but i've heard it's all so spicy so that's a mix that i'm down for so this is about cinnamon and she saves the demon fallon and he wants to kill the witch enslaving his people and i guess she kind of gets drawn into helping him it just seems very like whimsy fantasy and spice the perfect mixture these next books are a mixture of books that i have and haven't read so that you know is what it is so the first thing that i'm going to be recommending are rachel griffin's books the nature of witches and wild is the witch which are more contemporary fantasies she is coming out with her first high fantasy soon so i'm very excited about it and if you look the cases of this i mean that is spring um, but this book is actually about Clara, who's an everwitch, so the witches are connected to the climate, and basically, like, each witch has a season that they're affiliated to, except for Clara, who is an everwitch, and she is connected to all the seasons, which makes her really super strong. And the witches in this world kind of are the ones that have to combat climate change, and Clara is really their only hope because she is, like, the last of an everwitch that can control all four of the seasons. It was so intriguing because... Each of the seasons, like, obviously the witch that is tied to that season is the most powerful in that season, but it also, like, dictates their their mood and their magic, and especially with Clara, like, her, like, personality kind of morphs with the seasons along with her powers, which I thought was so interesting, is through the whole year it has, like, all different seasons, but again, just because it is such, like, a nature-based story, I would recommend reading it in spring. Um, I, I just think it's like a spring book because again it, it just really talks about the connection to nature and I picked this book up on a whim not thinking that I was going to think much of it and I adored it the writing was so beautiful there was such a sweet sweet romance in here the main character Clara is bi and I feel like it incorporates her bisexuality into like the plot and the romance very well as well and the love interest in this was just like a little cinnamon roll he was so sweet and soft and emotional and you know in a world full of books where they're all you know badass men sometimes you just want a sweet little cinnamon roll and that's what this book has we also have wild is the witch which apparently my dust jacket is on upside down but again the nature vibes are very strong so wild is the witch follows iris who had a night where her magic turned deadly and so she's kind of retreated to rural washington and she decides to let no one know that she's a witch and she kind of spends her time writing curses that she won't cast whenever she gets frustrated. She works at a wildlife refuge with her mother, um, except their intern, Pike, hates witches. When Pike makes a particularly hurtful comment, 
Iris writes the curses to end all curses. But just as she's about to get rid of it, an owl swoops and takes it away. So the owl is a powerful amplifier and if it dies, Iris's spell will be let loose and it will wreak havoc everywhere with her dark magic. So Iris and Pike are forced to work together to trek through the wilderness and hunt down this owl that has taken the curse. So again, wildlife refugee, owls, witches. It's not set in the same world as nature of witches, but it seems like the witches are tied to nature. And again, it just seems very atmospheric, springy nature vibes. The next book I have is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This is an arc and I want to read it. It is set in winter. However, it's still giving cottage core, so I put it on this list. This is about Emily Wilde and she is an expert in fae folklore and she goes to Northern Ireland to continue to study the folklore that she's so interested in. She is very introverted and she kind of has a hard time connecting with people as much as she connects with her work. So she doesn't really plan on connecting with the locals in the small town. However, she is distraught when her academic rival Wendell arrives in the same town as well and starts to befriend all of the local townspeople. And she finds herself close to uncovering the mysteries of the hidden ones that live outside of this town. But another mystery starts to haunt her. Who is Wendell really? I've heard such good things. I think I really, I maybe I should put, add this to my April TPR as well because I think it's just time that I pick it up. And if you like fairies, if you like small towns and nature, this just seems to be the vibe that I'm trying to encapsulate in this video. The next book that gives spring vibes is Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. This is a sapphic witchy romance that I read two years ago and I loved it. I think it just gave all of the witchy, naturey kind of vibes that I am setting out to recommend for in this video. Tamsin, I think this one's Tamsin, is one of the most powerful witches of her generation. However, she commits a magical sin and she's outcast by the coven and she no longer has the ability to feel love. And the only way that she can get love back is to steal it from others. Then we have Ren, who is a source, so she can't perform magic herself, but she can provide magic for the witches, which makes her very valuable. And she's kind of hiding out in this back country with her father who is ailing and she's taking care of him. So there is a magical plague that is ravaging the kingdom and Ren's father falls for it. So she goes to Tamsin who is kind of living as a recluse and is like, I will give you the love I have for my father if you heal him. Bargains are tricky and the two have a perilous journey in front of them. So again, if you're looking for witchy, kind of like connected to nature vibes and a beautiful and very, very sweet sapphic romance, definitely check this one out. I feel like it's been so long since I've been able to recommend this book, but I really loved it and beautiful writing. I think the witchy vibes, again, perfect for spring. Next, we have A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lynn, and I want to say the only reason I'm recommending this book because I can't see if it's set in spring or if it has anything to do with spring-like things besides the cover is literally just this cover. Like, imagine reading this cover outside in a garden in spring with the flowers surrounding you. Like, this cover gives I'm reading this book in a garden full of flowers vibes. That is literally my reasoning for putting it on this list, but you know, sometimes that's all you need. And like, it's pink underneath the little tape up. And this is the special edition with this artwork. I was a little mad because I got the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of this book, and then the second book you can only get special edition in the box set. So I haven't picked up the second book yet because I don't know what to do. But it's about tea. Ning unknowingly brewed a poison tea that killed her mother, and that is the same tea that now threatens her sister's life. So Ning hears of a competition to compete in a tea brewing challenge where it's basically like in between all of these people that master the art of tea brewing and the winner will get a favor from the princess and Ning sees this as the only opportunity to save her sister's life. But of course, she may be in danger of throwing herself into the middle of a political situation. I mean, it's vibrant, it's beautiful, it fits the vibe. Next, we have A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. So this book made my list because it's, again, a very, like, seems like nature-focused type 
novel. I haven't read it, so I don't know, but I know Rebecca Ross's writing is very, very beautiful. I have um, Dreams Lie Beneath here, which is focused on dream magic. I was kind of in between this one and this one for this video, but I decided to go with this one because, I don't know, it just gives me more spring vibes. It's about an enchanted island, which to me, spring vibes, enchanted, enchantments, magic, wilderness, spring. We follow Jack, who is a bard, and 10 years after he leaves the small islands of Cadence, he's summoned back home because Adaria, the leader of the island, believes that he's the only one that can help find all of these girls that have recently gone missing. And let me just read this little statement because I think it's just done so well in this summary. Enchantments run deep on Cadence. Gossip is carried by the wind. Plaid shawls can be as strong as armor, and the smallest cut of a knife can instill fathomless fear. The elemental spirits that dwell in every breath of air, splash of water, blade of grass, and flicker of fire find mirth in the lives of humans. What happens is this bard's music is the only thing that can summon the spirits of the island to like explain what is going on with these missing girls. So it's about like nature and music and like childhood enemies and probably very beautiful prose i'm sure um lush world building and i think it's just a great fantasy to pick up in the springtime I, there is also a sequel i'll put the cover here um that i haven't picked up yet but when i pick this one up i would probably also read the second book in the duology as well i believe it's a duology next we have the poison season by mara rutherford i've talked about this book just in the fact that this cover was my favorite cover of 2022 it's a charlie bowler cover i just think it's so it's so beautiful with her face and then all of like the berries around and again it's it's about like a, an island with a lot of poison on it so again that connection to nature we follow lilo who has spent her whole life on the island of Angela, and basically like outsiders are not allowed in so there is a bloodthirsty forest and a poisonous lake that guard this land this island lilo sees an outsider on the verge of drowning in the magical poisonous lake and she does the unthinkable and she saves him it, this choice will outcast her from the society and it's basically like she's betraying everyone that she knows but she begins to question this lifestyle that the islanders are leading and sees like you know not all of the danger comes from the outside so again i think this book is just going to be beautiful I want to read it so bad and like look at the chapter headings they have these little like poison berries and poison and <laughs> poison and like plants again leading back to that spring theme and I'm gonna end here with the book that I think is most obviously for the springtime but it is Flower Heart by Catherine Bakewell I think this book was just meant for the spring it's supposed to be cozy cottagecore fantasy and I mean just just look at it like this is perfect for the spring look at the illustrations on the back it has this very like almost anime like style cover and i'm obsessed clara has always had this wild magic however it's never been dangerous until a simple touch causes poisonous flowers to bloom in her father's chest the only way to heal him is to cast a very complex and demanding spell and the only person that can help her is xavier her childhood friend who has gone from shy and sweet to like a distant mysterious man xavier asks for something really terrible in exchange for helping her and she begins to uncover some of the secrets that he has been hiding she begins to search for the roots of this heavy and dark magic that has taken hold in the queendom and she might be the only person that can stop it i mean look at these little potions on the back it's everything i want in a springtime book i just feel like i want to curl up in a garden actually i would if it gets warm enough in April, I would love to bring this book to like the Boston Public Garden and like read amongst the flowers. I think that's like my dream. That's my dream, this book. Spring. Spring book recommendations. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you guys are getting very excited for spring and all the things that it brings, whether that be allergies or flowers. Um, I am very excited because also my birthday is in a month and I'm a spring baby and I just feel like I adore spring down to my core. And I'm very, very excited for the weather to start warming up and to just start feeling like the peace that the outdoors in the springtime brings me. Let me know down below what you think is the perfect spring book and leave a little flower bouquet emoji if you have watched this far. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comments and engagement really helps my channel. And have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.